Our text this morning is John 15, 5. Jesus says, I am the vine, you are the branch. And he who abides in me and me in him bears much fruit. And then he says, without me you can do nothing. This song is a commentary on Song of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 7. Look out the window. There in a tree, two lovebirds singing, happy and free. That's the way love is, comes naturally. Love will give you a song. If you let love be, we can't make love. We gotta let love. If we try to make love, we won't hear love when love calls. We can't make love. We got to let love. There's no jumping into love. There's no jumping into love. There's no jumping into love. You got to fall in love. Fall in love. I went to my mama's house to kick back and relax. That's what you do at mama's house, right? I took a bite of an apple. Got a mouthful of wax. I wouldn't lie to you. A man-made apple might be voluptuous to see. But a man-made apple is yucky. You can take it from me. We can't make love. We gotta let love. If we try to make love, We won't hear love when love calls. We can't make love. We gotta let love. There's no jumping into love. There's no jumping into love. There's no jumping into love you gotta fall in love fall in love love knows when you're lonely love cries with you each and every tear. Love will heal you, but only as you let love, love away your fear. 1 John 4, 18. Jesus is love. And He loves you and me.
we can't make love. Just simply receive. Fall in love. Fall in love. Fall in love. Wow. My brother the deacon says, God expects me to tithe every dime. God expects me to be at church every time the doors open. God expects me to dominate my kids. God's keeping a record of every wrong that I ever did. Brother deacon's duty bound sounds like he might have a little trouble coping. If he's walking in the light, then tell me how come he's so anxious he can't sleep at night. God, I can't tell him that you don't expect those things, but I don't like his attitude and the bondage that it brings. Would you give me a little bit of light and help me see? God says, son, do you think I expect you to breathe? If you'll let me love you, what you're supposed to do, will come naturally we're not duty bound we're love free we don't walk around bound by responsibility serve him out of love we want to don't you see we're not duty bound we're love free the modern day tower of Babel has got a steeple And I've never seen so many committed, burned out people. A love affair with Jesus can't be taxing. And a labor of love can even be relaxing. I'm not duty bound. I'm love free. I don't walk around bound by responsibility. Serve him out of love. We want to, don't you see? We're not duty bound. We're love free. Come unto me, all ye who labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and get to know me. My yoke is easy, my burden is light you'll find rest for your soul. I am the vine, you are the branch. He who abides in me and me in him will bear much fruit. And without me, you can do nothing. Love free, off key but free. Amen. Thank you. I'm a homeboy. Many of you know that we're growing up together. I'm saying we, we're grown up, but we're growing up together. And I, uh, my family joined this church when I was 10 years old in the, in the fifth grade. And, uh, and you're our family, and you're our heart, and you're our home. And I was honored to serve as associate pastor here in the early 80s. And uh, my precious wife, Patty, uh, I was, I've been here longer than she has, but when we got married in 72, like 51 years ago, we, uh, 
this was home, and she was teaching Sunday school here, and uh, she grew up a Methodist, and she'd only been sprinkled. So we snuck her in, and she taught the kids Sunday school class in the Baptist church, and she'd only been sprinkled. And so what did the Lord do? Well, Nancy's Creek needed an a associate pastor, so I went on there to be their interim. This is in the early 90s, and I got to dunk my wife. So she's a legitimate Baptist. <laughs> so we don't have to sneak her in anymore. But our, our life has been just, we're, we're just so much a part of each other. Now I served for several years as your associate pastor in the early 80s. But when things started, doors started opening and I knew that the coat and tie never did fit. I was out of place and didn't like it a bit. The reverend tag in the pulpit never was me. Decided with the time that I got left, going to quit pretending, just be myself. Sometimes it scares my wife to death, but I suspect she still loves me and my pocket tees and lees. I dressed up for y'all today. Pocket tees and lees, pocket tees and lees. Faded and frayed at the knees, not by the factory, but by hanging on me. Pocket tees and lees, going with the wind, life is a breeze. I only want to know that my father is pleased in my pocket tees and lees. God bless the steeple people, I love them all, but a man's got to get up and go where he's called. Prison streets and jails, a yard from the gates of hell. I grab my guitar and I follow the star that I see, and Jesus loves even me, even in my pocket tees and lees. Well, when it's time to put that guitar down, lay these remains in the ground, sure be blessed with this one request. Would you bury me in my pocket tees and leaves? And here's what happened. This was so beautiful. Over the past 30 something years, the Lord has, I've never asked for a place to go share, never. And money has never been a part of it. But I've gone to various parts of the world that are very dark and very dangerous. I mean, with starving children and, and, and lean to cardboard houses, homes, sewer running through the streets. Young ladies in South, this is South Africa, you, you know, young ladies that are 90-something percent of them are raped before, before they're 12 years old and have been in such horror, been, been in, in prisons that were hundreds of years old, like in Europe, where the guillotine's still in there. Spent the day surrounded by, by savage, psychopathic murderers and killers and gangs. And I hear everywhere I've gone, I've been in respectable places too, you know. Uh, <laughs> but everywhere I've gone, echoing in my mind, for 30 years now, you sent me off, you released me right over here. And we had a special service when I had resigned as your associate pastor to go out where he was leading me in the missions in Reuben Boozer said to me, wherever you go, Williams is with you. And I still hear his voice. I've heard his voice in various parts of the world and all kind of danger and all kind of glory and ups and downs, the roller coaster. I hear my brother, my mentor, my friend, Reuben. Wherever you go, Williams is with you. And now that our Father's arms work, and I'm not going to take on more, and I want to be like Bob Ford. I want to love you by being considerate of your time. And I'm not, so I just covered 30 minutes and 10. <laughs> but I, but I, I want you to know that there's just a whole lot more going on with Patty and me right now than just sharing the gospel somewhere. We're home. And we love you so much. And we're your servants. And I'm honored that you would invite us and have us here today. And uh, so now, those uh, masks, I forgot mine right here. I can't, um, my hearing, uh, physical hearing is diminishing, but my inner hearing is increasing. The outer man is decaying, but the inner man is being renewed day by day. So that's a good thing. And, um, and I, uh, I I'm, I'm like a Chinese tourist going through America. I can't understand a word people are saying. I just, uh, <laughs> we won't complicate things. Now I can, you know, and, and, and right now looking at you, you know, I don't know if you're smiling or not. <laughs> Some of you, you might be frowning at me. I don't even notice it. You know, don't even recognize it. But I want to tell you something very wonderful about these, about these masks. Uh, and this is good stewardship, right? This mask is also 
a wonderful handkerchief. You know, you <laughs> So the reason I'm not wearing it is because it's been a handkerchief, <laughs> okay? <laughs> but I love back to the text today. When he said, without me, you can do nothing. And we're talking about bearing authentic fruit. And there are masquerade ministries. And this is to find fault with no one because you can't walk in light you don't have. But a lot of what looks good is not the Lord. And just because it's nickels, noses, and numbers, they knock at your door with a handshake and a track, ask you if you know Jesus, then leave in their new Cadillac. No food in the cupboard, the baby's sick, and it's a wonder their hidden agenda was nickels, noses, and numbers. Love with a hook in it is not love at all. The evangelist comes to town, he says, for Christ's sake, the more the people cry, the more money in the collection plate. Kleenex at the altar, screaming and crying a lot. You call it repentance, but it's not. Love with a hook in it is not love at all. There are a lot of manufactured ministries who are claiming God's anointing and presence there, but they're manipulating hurting people and exploiting hurting people to get their pockets filled up. And a lot of people are seeing that and running from Christ because there's a counterfeit. The real Jesus comes not for a dog and pony show under a steeple. He even says that your charitable deeds be done in secret. Now I want to tell you, you're privileged to be a part of, of, of frail, fragile human beings like we all are, church, but body of Christ. But listen, if, uh, if many of you are more qualified than I am because you've been longtime members when I showed up as a fifth grader. Okay, but I want to tell you the presence and the love of the Lord Jesus Christ is in this place. And it's not academic, it's not technique, it's not something you try to do or make do or you do for show. There is an undercurrent of unfailing love in this place. All right, and the question is, how do we, how do we intensify the expression of it? Well, one thing is to be completely reminded that without Him, we can do nothing, so don't even try. You can look good. You can get the nickels and noses and numbers up. You can look better in the church down the road. You can get you a pastor that's, that uh, looks good with the credentials and all that stuff. Stop it. Keep doing what you're doing, and that is pray and obey. Father, what do you want? Our only ambition is to please you. We want the life of the vine flowing through this place, and we know without you we can do nothing, but we've got to abide in you. And when you are abiding in him, guess who's Lord? And I'll tell you what's not him is when I'm trying to be Lord with my self-will and use my wisdom and my techniques and my principles. That's when an organization kills the organism. But when you, like a child, will just keep doing what you're doing, it's so precious. It's Jesus loves me, this I know. That's all the theology you need. Every theologian misses it. They're trying to explain the unexplainable. But it's that childlike love and faith. Now, if we're abiding in Him and His Word is abiding in us and we're bearing much fruit, sometimes it's seen, sometimes it's not, but we're never trying to get a reputation. If Jesus made Himself no reputation, what do we want one for? All right, so now as we're simply individually letting Him love me and letting Him be the Lord, and that is I'm not working for God, I'm working with Him. And self-will is the traitor and the enemy. Treason is the reason for the curse in planet Earth. It's human beings trying to do their self-effort work in total disregard of the head. Right wing curses the left, left wing curses the right. Two wings on the same bird. Have you ever seen such a sight? Fussing and a fighting and a scratching and a biting, totally unaware of the head. The earthbound bird is soon going to be dead. So it's not fault finding, it's understanding us frail, fragile human beings need mercy, and I need a bunch of it, but I got it. And so do you. And when you show that mercy to others and you do not let strife or self-interest invade your heart and your thought life and your emotions, then you're not tormented by fear, like most people are. You're letting His perfect love love that fear out of you, and you're doing it privately and personally. And here's what's happening. God, this is precious. You can try to fight the water but the water always wins. 
you can try to fight the water, even pretend you're the water's friend. You can try to be the big boss, the one who controls it all. Well, you might as well try and stiff arm Niagara Falls. Stiff arm in Niagara Falls, stiff arm in Niagara Falls. Selfish Willie, self will is the biggest fool of them all, y'all. Stubbornly stiff arm in Niagara Falls. Sooner or later, every big shot turns out to be a little squirt. Inflated egos are bound to bite the dirt. Life is like a river flowing to the deep. You can build a dam, but you dang well know that the dam is going to spring a leak, and that ain't all when you try to stiff arm Niagara Falls. I wrote that you can build a dam, but you damn well know the dam will never spring. And Patty said, I don't like you cussing in church. <laughs> so I stuck dang in there. <laughs> stiff arm in Niagara Falls, stiff arm in Niagara Falls. Selfish Willie is the biggest fool of them all stubbornly stiff arm in Niagara Falls and we don't even know we're doing it. You can't walk light you don't have, but here comes the light. The enemy of self-effort. And when Paul said in Galatians 2, 20, I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me, the vine through the branch. And the life I live in this flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. All right, so now that river of life who's the Lord Jesus Christ is bearing fruit and it ain't waxed apples, man. I mean, it, there is just life going on and coming through us. Okay, and here it is. River of living water flow through me. River of living water flow through me. Will you make that your prayer? Right now, out loud. River of living water flow through me. River of living water flow through me. River of living water flow through me. Thy will, thy way is the key to being free. And it's the key to it all when you stop trying to stiff arm Niagara Falls. That's when you're abiding in the vine and the vine's abiding in you. Then indeed you're my disciples. You know the truth and the truth will make you free. All right, friends, so precious. Have you seen the unseen? Uh, most news commentators have not. And if you're walking in the counsel of the ungodly, it's Psalm 1. If you're walking in the counsel of the ungodly that says God doesn't love you, he's a man upstairs, if he's a God, this... The, the, when you walk in the counsel of the ungodly that says you're not loved with an unfailing love that forgives all of your sins that Jesus came in the flesh. Walk not in the counsel of the ungodly, stand in the way of sinners and sinners of people that don't know they were loved with an unfailing love. Sit in the seat of the scornful. That's all the scorning and the backbiting and the criticism that comes out of the heart of a human being that doesn't know their love and they've been, they've been in church all their life. Tormented by fear. We don't walk in the counsel of the ungodly, stand in the way of sinners, or sit and see the scornful, but our delight is in the law of God in Romans 13, 10. Every time you see law in the Old Testament, it's revealed in the New Testament. He says, lay your life down, no hook in it, forgiving love, first demonstrated at a cross, fulfills the whole law. Back to Psalm 1, the success chapter. Get this in our kids. We don't walk in the counsel of the ungodly, stand in the way of sinners, or sit in the seat of the scornful. Our delight is in the law of God. Lay your life down, no hook in it, forgiving love, first demonstrated through a blood-soaked cross for you, copyrighted thumbprint. That fulfills the law, and he writes his law on your heart and causes you to keep his ordinances. And here's what he says. When you walk not in the counsel of the ungodly, stand in the way of sinners, or sit in the seat of the scornful, but your delight is in the love of God that fulfills the law. He says your leaf doesn't wither. You bear fruit in season and everything you touch prospers because everything you touch, God Almighty's touching. And if God Almighty, the creator of the universe, the one by whom and for whom everything was created in heaven and earth, the one who has all power and authority in heaven and earth, he's in disguise. And when you're humbling your heart and you're letting him love you and you're making his commandment the keynote of your life, are you loving that person next to you like Christ loves you, yes or no? And the one who knows your heart knows if it's yes or no. Well, if it's no, if it's self-effort, you are not abiding in the vine no matter how good your ministry looks or how much money you got in the bank. But when you come like a little child, Jesus loves me, this I'm beginning to know through that cross, the revelation of that cross, 
then the life of the vine is flowing. You bear fruit in season. Your leaf does not wither and everything you touch prospers because everything you touch and God Almighty is touching. Now let me tell you what he does in order to test the love in you. Not, not for him to see, he already knows, but for you to see. He will let a difference of opinion come in the body to test their love for each other. Do I love you more than I love being right? <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> Because we don't, none of us have the whole loaf. In Proverbs 4, he says, The way of the righteous is like the light of dawn. It goes brighter and brighter until the full day. And if I don't have all the light, how can I always be right? <laughs> so this humble posture of letting him love you and letting him love this troubled world through you. And he starts opening doors no man can close. And I'm telling you, money is no longer an issue. You're accountable and you keep up with it and all that because... You know, we submit to the authorities, we want to be a witness for Christ and all that stuff. But I'm telling you, he'll send money out of places you thought was nowhere to fulfill his will. His will. And when he guides, he provides. And when he gives the vision, he gives the provision. I got a million stories about, about a couple that run on empty. And what he's allowing us to be a part of all over this planet. It's just absolutely, totally amazing to live the true Christian life, the life of incredible adventure. Now, here's what happens in clothing. Boy, clothing. And clothing. <laughs> she told me last night, she said, you get words mixed up sometime. And so there's one of them. But in closing, faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please Him. And in Hebrews 11, the faith chapter, faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Have you seen the unseen? F-A-I-T-H, finding the awesome invisible truth of heaven. I want to have more faith. You can't self-effort get it. If you try to grab it, you lose it. You try to light it, you diffuse it. It's not up to you and you can't pick or choose it. Some still refuse it, others still abuse it. When are we going to learn? Love and faith is on God's terms. Now, here's how you grow in your faith. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word. And that's not man's interpretation of the Bible. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the living word that says he is alive in here today. He's coming back. He was here, walked the earth in one body. But I am is here right now with you right now living in you. You and he are one. You are the body of Christ. You are the bride of Christ. Would you consider yourself unworthy like the Jews did in Antioch when Paul went to the Gentiles? He said, you consider yourself unworthy of eternal life. Don't consider yourself unworthy of eternal life. That blood was for you. He wants to come and live in you. That's Colossians 1, the mystery of the ages is Christ in you, the hope of glory. And when you let him love you, here's what happened. He becomes the author and perfecter of faith in you. And this is a scripture to put on your fridge, man. It's half a verse that'll totally transform and change your life. How do I get more faith? Here it is. Galatians 5, 6b. Faith worketh by love. My smartphone is a Greek Hebrew scholar. I can pull that thing out and I got a strong concordance right in there. I'm, I'm getting pretty good at it. I looked up worketh in Galatians 5, 6. Just put Galatians 5, 6 Greek. And there it is. There's all the whole issue. It's amazing. The tools that we have available to us right now. Faith worketh by love. Faith worketh by love. The Amplified Bible says faith is activated, energized, and expressed by love. Now that word worketh is... I might need to go to seminary and learn how to pronounce it, right? But it's electro. I probably said it right. Electro. It's like electricity. And love electrifies the faith in you. It activates the faith in you. When you let Jesus love you, now listen to me, guilt, regret, and shame is to selfishly stiff arm the cross and say that blood wasn't enough for me. Could anything be more self-centered and arrogant? That blood was enough for me. No matter what you've done, no matter what you're doing, no matter what you will do, nothing is going to separate you from His love and you receive what the blood has done for you. You stand before the court of the universe as if you lived a perfect life. And you receive that and you start letting God love you and then He starts becoming the author and perfecter of faith in you and you begin to see the unseen and you walk by faith and not by sight anymore. Isn't that precious? And your Bible comes alive. You're more interested in the living Word. Now here's what happens. You're not reading your Bible like an academic class. That's not your Bible study. When you start going to that Word and the proverb for this day is a great way to start it. 
you start going to that word and when the Bible starts reading you and you realize Hebrews 4, 12, the word of God is sharper and active in any two-edged sword, rightly dividing the sun of the soul from the spirit, revealing the thoughts and intents of your heart so that your heart can get in agreement with God Almighty. And you know what the next thing that happens is? You start to see the unseen and you're living in the anticipate of redemption, not the anticipation of destruction. There's all your worry and your anxiety that love loves out of you. Precious. Precious. Without me, you can do nothing, he says. And here's what, Lord, I'm so sorry. I've been so selfish. I've had so much self-effort. I've been trying to work for God and prove myself rather than look to you and you proved me at a cross one day. Jesus, thank you for showing me your light because the days, the brief days I have left in this fragile, temporary, earthly body, I long for you to love this troubled world through me, beginning with the people right next to me. Not to manipulate them or to use them to build a ministry, that's over. That died at a cross one day Self-will is crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, we live, yet not you and I, but Christ liveth in us. And the life we live in the flesh, we live by the faith of the Son of God who loved us and gave himself for us. Will you let him love you? We will in all earnesty and sincerity say to him, living water flow through me. Now listen, whatever you're receiving, that's what you're projecting. That is the root of domestic violence. People are hitting each other, but they're really hitting at themselves. Henrietta hates her neighbor for something said years ago. She keeps her kids away from Sunday school because that's where the neighbor's kids go. Her mama lived in hatred too and it killed her. Now she's gone. What lives deep down inside your heart, you can't help but pass it on. You're passing it on right down to the children. You're passing it on, that spirit inside of you. Is it the devil's strife and hatred and criticism and animosity and hate? Or is it the love of Jesus? What lives deep down inside your heart, you can't help but pass it on. Well, the preacher can't stand the deacon, and the deacon's wife hates the preacher, and the choir director can't sleep at night because he resents the Sunday school teacher. There used to be only one First Baptist, now there's two or three. Would somebody tell those professing Christians, stop your fighting long enough to listen? Jesus shed his precious blood, and hallelujah, he'll set you free. And you can pass it on right down to the children. You've got to let him love you at the altar of your heart. It may bring you to this altar right here. Obey him. But it's the altar in your heart where the truth comes to set you free. And that truth is, Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so. Finally, brethren, precious friends, family, I was a burned out preacher trying to prove myself as a young man and I broke they can call it whatever they want to and I broke and this came to me in the silence of late at night on my knees in my prayer closet when everyone else was asleep God spoke this to my heart and God is going to speak this to you through me right now. Child, working for me is not the same as working with me. I want you to see I long to live my life through you. I'm not primarily interested in your ministry. I'm not interested in how busy you can be. My interest is you. So let me love you. Let me love you. Let me lift you high above your fear. Let me love you. Let me love you. Let me give you eyes to see and ears to hear me speak. Let me love you. Child, you've been striving for so long, fighting to find a way to feel like you belong. But can't you see I love you just like you are? And I've already freely given you the very thing you've been grasping for. Will you let me love you? Will you let me lift you high above your fear? 
Will you let me give you eyes to see and ears to hear me speak? Will you let me love you? That's the invitation. And you and I are responding to that invitation right now. Either yes or no. Yes. Heavenly Father, thank you for allowing us to pass through home again to the people we love so.